Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Soap Fan Spoilers, where I'm giving you spoilers for your favorite show. But first, if you haven't done so, please take a minute to subscribe. If you have subscribed, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Please hit that like button so YouTube knows a good channel for Soap Fans. And we have membership where you get early access to videos. You get our lives every Friday where we do the spoilers and um, just create a good community. And let's just, I'm so fam. And also I give this shout out. So I'm going to go ahead and take 30 seconds to thank Micah Pryor, Gwen Marie, Ariane Enos, Kiki Landry, Red Butterfly for the Irish, Sandra Crawford, Shannon Clark, like Janet Loftus, Marilyn Finn, Christy Power, Omar, Riri Carter, Sam Slims, Josh Hirsch, Cheryl Beecher, Demi Sun, Chalkman33, Kim Price, Denise M, Deborah Velasquez, the NJ Tribe fan, Lisa Knapp, MJ Hano, Susanna Rajan, Natasha M, Alvara, Samantha Greenridge, Roger Renato, Irene Gerhardt, Debbie Belt, and Kira H. Thank you so much for being part of the membership. And now it's time to give the spoilers for your favorite show. Now it's time to talk about Young and Restless. We're going to begin with Monday, uh, March the 25th, where Lily confrontation with Heather wasn't what it needed to be. It needs to be a real soap confrontation, not maybe I'll fire you. I haven't decided yet. Why is she still here? Where are the soap consequences? So basically, Lily confront is trying to avoid Heather. Heather is trying to force Lily to accept that, you know, her and Daniel together and they didn't mean to hurt her. Lily, you know, lashes out just a little bit. But I miss the days of, you know, soaps when there was, you know, meaningful confrontations. You know, we need some characters to shake the table because this ain't it. Heather worked for Lily and Daniel, works for Devon. Where is the drama versus the escalation? Because on the show, and I'm reading from my notes from having watched the episode. So on the episode, Heather asks, well, does she still have a job? And Daniel asks Devon, does he still have a job? And Devon says, well, it's up to Lily because, you know, she may not want to see you every day. And we could actually keep a mega spear and just replace you. So, <laughs> so Daniel's looking stupid and Heather's looking stupid because they're together, but they could lose their jobs. But the show was already leaning in the direction of just letting things, Lily being the bigger person and just letting them stay there. But we'll see. Uh, Phyllis assuming Christine is dining alone despite two place settings. So this is one of the absolute stupidest things I've ever seen on the soap opera. And I've seen a lot of stupid things. I watched Passions all the way to the end. So if you if you were a Passions fan like me, you know, towards the end, it just got ridiculous. They just was all over the place. But it's like Phyllis is in high school again. So Christine and Danny are at the table and... Like, I'm shocked. Like, I thought they were off the show, that he was off on his tour and she was with him. That's kind of where they left him. And so Danny asked Christine to go to the uh, sit, go to a room so they can do the deed. And while he's going to go get the room, you know, Phyllis, that's when Phyllis shows up and says, you know, Christine's dying alone and Danny must have left her because just like the fans watching, we all assumed he was gone. Phyllis thinks he's gone too and because Christine is there, he must have dumped her. So she's trying to be happy about that. But Christine tells her when you're wrong, you're wrong. And she just exits. And so when she goes up there, you know, she goes to the room, he texts her the room number. And when she goes to the room, she opens the door and he's got flowers everywhere and making a whole romantic scene. And she's like, oh, Mr. Ramalati, you're trying to seduce me. So I don't know if you wanted it, <laughs> but Christine and Danny have a love scene that probably needed to be off camera. But anyway, but anyway, Phyllis shows up. Now, this is the thing that annoyed me. Phyllis didn't know the room number. She was clearly following Christine, yet when Christine showed up at the door, Phyllis was nowhere to be found. Christine had a conversation with Danny, 
while she was outside of the room. And so where was Phyllis? And then after she's in the room, and I think they were already like kissing and falling on the bed, here comes Phyllis. And my lighting's changing. That's why I'm disappearing. The sun's starting to go down. Um, uh, but uh, anyway, Phyllis pulls the fire alarm like a teenager to try to stop Danny and Christine from getting it on. And that was stupid. I mean, how old are all of these characters? They're all over 50. And you're playing with the fire alarm to try to stop people who probably, you know, it's it's not going to stop it. So I just feel it's stupid. Like they don't know what to do with Phyllis. And so they haven't heard just be very immature. Uh, now my next note says, uh, Victor complains about what happened with Jordan, even though he had a chance to get rid of her. So it turns out that Nikki says she couldn't live with herself if Jordan had died. And so they called the ambulance. And as you can see in the picture behind me, the episode ends with Jordan being handcuffed to a hospital bed and her inner monologue, she's thinking, you know, her plan worked. She made it to the hospital and now she just has to plot her escape so that she can plan her revenge yet again. And I always thought it was stupid that Victor left Jordan in the basement. Like, what was he going to do? Let her starve to death? Was that his his plan? This is the guy who kidnapped Jack, replaced him with Marco, shot Jack thinking he was Marco. And after everything that this woman has done to his family, I couldn't imagine Jordan, Victor leaving Jordan alive. And so Victor is upset with Victoria, Claire, and Nikki because they called the ambulance. Victoria is kind of quiet and Claire's like, we probably should have let her die. And Nikki's like, oh no, we can't do that. This is the woman that killed her friend Seth and had her looking over her shoulder, scared, having protective, having her, uh, having security constantly around her, knowing that she may come out. She can't even go to work at Newman without a guard following her. And yet she says she couldn't live if she had let Jordan die. It, the writing's not writing. It's not making any sense. Devon says that in the contract, he can replace Daniel. Well, I already talked about this because I was taking notes as I was watching the show. But that's pretty much the episode. Um, and in my final note, just had the addition that I wish that Lily and Devon fired Heather and Daniel. And I think the more interesting story would have been if Daniel lost his job, became depressed, and turned back into the man that Heather divorced. And so Lily built Daniel back up and made him the man that Heather wanted to be with again. So it would be interesting to see if Heather could do what Lily did or, you know, any of those interesting dynamics that could come out of that, because Daniel was a very boring character. Heather is a very boring character. And Lily can be interesting when she wants to be, but she's not currently in a good storyline. So that is that that is not it. That's just it for Monday. So now we're going to go to the spoilers for the rest of the week. Tuesday, Jack and Tracy worry about Ashley's behavior. Danny romances Christine, which means... The fire alarm didn't stop stop uh, the show. <laughs> you know, they still going to get it on and Phyllis is still going to be depressed. And Audra makes a shocking decision. Wednesday, Daniel and Heather worry about their future. Adam and Chelsea disagree on how to help Connor. And Lily takes charge at the office. Thursday, Nikki confides in Jack. Sally gives Adam some moral support. I wish they would give her a storyline. 
you know, Courtney Hope is too good of an actress and has too big of a fan base for her to not have a story. Adam doesn't even have a story, so um, I don't consider that Connor stuff a story. And Diane and Kyle navigate their relationship with Jabot. These writers do not know how to write Kyle. Kyle ain't been right since he left with the old summer, came back, and I don't think they know what to do with Kyle. Um, Young and the Rest is Friday, March 29th. Victor reveals a plan to distract Nikki from her problems. Claire catches the eye of someone new. I'm interested in seeing on who they're finally going to pair Claire up with. And Adam receives unsolicited advice from Nick. And that is the show for the week of the 20th. Spoilers for the week of the 25th. And I will see you in the next video.